We're here at ITU Telecom World 2015 in Budapest, Hungary, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Ms. Fatima Baros, who is Chair of Berec and also Chair of the Board of the Autoridade Nacional de Comunicações, uh, ANACOM, in Portugal. Ms. Baros, thank you very much indeed for being with us today. It's a great pleasure for me to be here and have the opportunity to share some views with you. Now, uh, the theme of ITU Telecom World 2015 is accelerating innovation for social impact this year. How have you seen ICT innovation directly impacting on socio-economic development and people's lives in uh, Portugal? I can tell you that, well, as you know, Portugal has been through a very serious economic crisis during the last uh, few years. And uh, one of the main problems that we faced were, in fact, uh, people losing their jobs. So unemployment became a very um, special problem in Portugal. We were not used to such a high levels of unemployment. And what was really important and what we could see was the shift in mentality from people that were not used were not used to face the risk. I think that in general, Portuguese were used to have uh, a job for life. And uh, during this crisis, they were forced to, to find other ways to, to survive, let's say. So, and, uh, and what you could see is that there was a development of entrepreneurship culture. And uh, most, many people, not just the, the young people, but many people decided to launch their own, um, their own uh, enterprises, their own businesses. And uh, many of them were, in fact, based on ICT, on new technologies. Because m many of these uh, SMEs, were, uh, or many of these startups, were based on e-commerce. So this was one way, if you want, for people to uh, find a job, to create their own job. And uh, right now, you see a vibrant ambience, environment in Portugal in what relates to entrepreneurship. And if you ask young people, even kids in college, what you want to do uh, when you finish, when you graduate, You'll find many times, many, it's very frequent to listen to these young people saying, I want to launch my own business. And this is totally different from what it used to be several years ago. Um, another important aspect was that because the internal demand, domestic demand shrank, uh, SMEs were forced to look for uh, another markets, for other markets. And uh, so uh, there was uh, an incredible boost in exports. And uh, the, the rate of increase in exports in Portugal was much higher than in the average of the European Union. And uh, what you can see is that also these exports are essentially based on innovation. And uh, um, innovation-driven entrepreneurship became, if you want, something very important for, for the country. And of course, behind this, you find software developing companies, you find um, many, um, many SMEs that, uh, let me just remind you, 90% of business uh, companies in Portugal are SMEs. So you can see how important this is for SMEs. And they learn how to incorporate ICTs and the new technologies in, the, in their businesses and products innovation. And so this had a strong impact on exports. In your opinion, can the digital single market contribute to the creation of a European culture of entrepreneurship and innovation? Well, I believe it will because um, the DSM strategy, in fact, is taking some action points that connect uh, different areas in the digital economy that are crucial. For example, uh, the development of e-commerce. And one of the aspects that is important for the development of uh, e-commerce is the cross-border parcels delivery. Um, you know, if uh, people don't trust um, don't trust uh, e-commerce activities, or if people believe that they must pay very high prices if they buy from another uh, member state, this will, of course, have a negative impact on the development of e-commerce. And, um, 
And so many of the actions that are in, the, uh, in this digital single market, of course, will have a strong impact on the development of the digital economy. And I believe that it will have a strong contribution for the creation of new jobs. Generally speaking, what can regulators do to promote investments in high-speed networks fit for purpose in the coming decade? Well, you know that, uh, let me just connect this with DSM. So part of the DSM uh, is related to the review of the regulatory framework because according to DSM, there is the recognition that the development of telecommunications networks are fundamental for the development of digital economy. And therefore, regulators are right now working um, at the BEREC level on the review of the regulatory framework in order to give an opinion to the Commission. We were requested by the European Commission to give our views on the review of the regulatory framework. And of course, connectivity is crucial because if you don't have uh, connectivity in Europe, you face the risk of a digital divide. That means that part of the population in Europe will not have access to um, fast broadband. And therefore, um, we must create the right environment for investors to be able to uh, put their money in the development of these uh, networks. Um, so first of all, the review of the regulatory framework is important in order to, uh, you know, to be sure that we regulate or we deregulate what is essential in order to create this um, uh, environment that is favorable for investment. On the other side, um, we are also facing a situation in Europe where we have 28 different markets with different levels of maturity. And therefore, regulators um, cannot use uh, the same tool for every type of market. So we, uh, we believe that one size doesn't fit all, and so we need flexibility in terms of regulation. So this is something important that we should introduce in this uh, framework review, is the, uh, the possibility that different uh, markets uh, and different uh, regulators in those markets can use different tools in, some in such a way that all of us will work in order to achieve the same goals, the goals that are defined by the digital agenda for Europe, the goals that are defined according to the, 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 the need to, uh, to build this internal market. But at the same time, we have flexibility to use the appropriate tool. So we need the same a common toolbox but with uh, you know, different possibilities for each, uh, each market. And of course, something important is that we must uh, have some uh, regulatory certainty because this is crucial for investment and uh, to, of course, to build trust for investors. Um, well, there are many other issues that are more technical, but probably you are not so interested in learning about them. But, um, in general, just to conclude, I think that regulators are in fact working in order to create this, um, this environment that will boost investment. And what's the major value for you? What's the, the uh, importance, the, re the real reason that, that you're here at ITU Telecom World? Is it for the exchange of ideas? Is it to, uh, to, to uh, find out what uh, your uh, colleagues in other countries are doing? What's the, what's the main uh, reason for your, your presence here today? Well, I, I should say that this year, that my presence here is rather special because I'm using the hat of uh, Barrick Chair for 2015. And therefore, somehow, I'm uh, uh, promoting the, the, um, the vision of BEREC in terms of regulation for Europe. Because, uh, um, you know, uh, ITU is about the entire world. And uh, in this case, uh, Europe is not so, uh, so well known among all our colleagues. So this is also a good opportunity to share with our colleagues what's going on in Europe and what we are doing in terms of regulation.
Gemma Barris, thank you very much for being with us today. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.